It was a joke by Norm MacDonald. Chris Kattan just seems gay to me. I never met a guy that seems so gay but says he isn't. Now, even to a non-PC person like myself, I can understand why this joke would step on a few toes. One interpretation is that he is portraying gays in a negative light and drawing a comparison to Chris Kattan to belittle him. Of course, another is that Norm is drawing a comparison to the mannerisms of gay men, and Chris Kattan has similar mannerisms, thus the humor. It's not really derogatory. It would be like talking about an Englishman who has French mannerisms and saying, he says he isn't a Frenchman. It's not the deepest of cuts. That line was from over 20 years ago, and it was from these Saturday Night Live days. The two were sniping at each other, getting on each other's nerves. Anyway, it got me thinking about how the culture of PC is slowly shrinking the topics that may be lampooned. So they created the concept of punching up and down, which is kind of weird because yes, SJWs are essentially saying that they believe some humans are above others, but they don't really stick to the bit. According to their logic, you should be able to make fun of politicians, but of course they say female politicians are off limits, because women in a first world nation are somehow marginalized and oppressed. They can't explain how women in first world nations are oppressed, but somehow they are. Except the weird thing is that if the female politicians are politically right of center, then it's acceptable to roast her. It's not logical, but they will find a loophole that allows them the desired outcome, or they won't find a loophole. They'll just ignore the logical argument and be flagrantly hypocritical. If you press them on the issue, they may say, well, we're on the left, and thus we can do no wrong, and people on the right are holding positions so abhorrent to us that we can't afford them the same rights as real people. It's left-wing logic like this that resulted in the slaughter of millions in Russia, China, Southeast Asia, and Cuba, because they treat people like things and not like people. They literally believe that if they murder or put in gulags millions of wreckers, they will make a perfect society. So this punching down concept isn't real. It doesn't even follow their own internal consistency. If it's not real, why do they use it? The simple answer is power and control. How do you get people to accept bad ideas? You make criticism of these bad ideas either illegal or socially unacceptable. If the people with the bad ideas are also in control of social media, i.e. the new town square, this is incredibly easy to do. You can't push back against bad ideas if you aren't allowed on the platforms to speak. The social media platforms only allow the dissemination of views in one direction, from left to right. For example, Desmond is amazing and the trans kid phenomenon. Now we all know that having children do strip teases for money on stage is an unsupportable position. This isn't Afghanistan or Pakistan for Pete's sakes. Except, of course it is. America, in this regard, is now the equivalent of Afghanistan and Pakistan. I'm referring to the dancing boys of those countries. I never thought I would live to see the day when I would see the dancing boys of America. It wasn't so long ago that the cops would go in and arrest the adults, and Child Protective Services would step in to remind these parents that child prostitution is a no-no. It's a strange timeline where we have the dancing boys of Afghanistan, Pakistan, and America. How did we get here? It's easy to explain. You can shut down discussion of the topic by calling critics transphobes. You can use the suffix phobe and attach it to anything. Apparently in the West, it has the magical ability to shut down conversation. Let me put it another way. In 10 years, LGBT will include a P. Don't be a bigoted phobe. Age is just a number. Love has no age. Already in Western Europe, they are discussing lowering the age of consent because so many Muslims have child brides. Most people would say, why do you have these people who hurt children in your country in the first place? But that's another rabbit hole for another video. Anyway, simply by calling someone phobic, you can excuse the most horrific behavior. It has somehow become controversial to say that you don't want to hurt children. Don't be a bigot, Bianca. Love has no age. Yes, it does. It's post-puberty. At least post-puberty, you have a biological point to reference. To say they are physically capable of reproduction, then we add a few more years uh, for emotional maturity to catch up. But now it's transphobic, Islamophobic, and homophobic to not allow people to hurt children. And I'm saying that, in, I'm using that phrase because there's some words you can't say on YouTube. Uh, like the P to the E to the D to the O. What happens if you're labeled a phobe? 
Well, it's going to hurt your ability to get a job or find a place to live. Companies don't care about the ethical questions involved. They just don't want the hassle of dealing with you. Social media has, over the course of a few years, allowed the inmates to control the asylum. Be careful, Bianca. Don't shame the mentally ill. And what makes it even funnier is the social media platforms will kick off the normies so they can't even defend themselves. It's why the Clown World meme got started. Speaking of Norm MacDonald, take a look at Owen Benjamin. Owen was an actor, comedian, who was in Hollywood doing films, sketch comedy, and stand-up. Owen had the temerity to feel that giving hormone blockers to children might not be a good idea. That ended his career in Hollywood. No more films or TV shows. He is persona non grata. What kind of place is Hollywood where saying that you don't want to hurt children is something that will get you fired? Owen is so hated by the trans gay mafia that when he does stand up, they try to get the venues to cancel on him because he doesn't want to drug children. Comedy has to be destroyed because comedy can sneak truths in between the jokes, important messages that lampoon bad ideas. The thing is, many of the ideas of the left can't be defended. Islam, socialism, communism all have really bad track records. In fact, these ideologies add up to almost a billion dead, and the worst human rights abuses in history. They can't be defended, so the only way to advocate for them is to silence dissent. And comedy is a great way of dissenting. Comedy is the ultimate way to hashtag resist. The court gesture can tell jokes before the king in court that tells them the feeling of the country. A cat may stare at a king, but a jester may speak truth to power, usually without losing his head. Comedians are able to express but we, what we are all thinking. It's a way to bring up topics that need to be explored. That terrifies certain people on the left. They can't abide free speech, so they try to control the narrative and the platforms. Take a look at the 2015 Saturday Night Live episodes. In the beginning, they lampooned everyone, including Hillary, but they never really dug deep into her. They always hit the right harder than the left. Then, as it became a race against Trump versus Hillary, they went full bore against Trump. They accused him of moral turpitude, of being a racist and a German of the late 1930s. They accused him of being evil. They went after Hillary for making a few bad decisions. The difference was obvious. They were obviously supporting Hillary, and once it became apparent, it became awkward to watch. They went from comedy to propaganda. They also did it in a weird, condescending, no true Scotsman way. They implied Trump supporters were country bumpkins with low IQ. As the elections got closer, Saturday Night Live and the late night talk show hosts went into full panic mode. It became very clear how far left the media was. In 2015 2016, CNN, MSNBC is known as fake news. But really, 90% of the media you find on TV is also fake news. They were so terrified by the 2016 election results that they are taking steps to ensure that it never happens again. They do this by controlling the social media platforms and by simply calling their opponents speech hate speech, which results in getting them kicked off the platform. Pretty soon, people understood that if they want to stay on Twitter or Facebook, they aren't allowed to criticize trans kids or defend people of European descent. Suddenly, it's transphobic or racist hate speech. To mention migrant crime. The left even controls stand-up. When comedians touch on politics, what's the punchline? Orange man, bad. That is the only allowed political punchline. And as a consequence, crowds don't spontaneously laugh anymore. They hear the joke, understand that it's appropriate to virtue signal, and they applaud. Then consciously decide to laugh. If you listen to left-wing comedy, you'll notice the strange behavior of the audience. Let me sum this up. We are witnessing the death of comedy as more and more topics become off-limits as they get called hate speech. You'll see less stand-up. Comedy works partially or on surprise. When you know the comedian is only going to punch right, it gets very, very boring. Some stand-up have transitioned into one-woman shows, i.e. comedians who aren't funny, who literally can't tell a joke to save their lives. They get up on stage and tell politically correct stories that allow the audience to virtue signal by applauding. I mention that they are one-woman shows because it mostly seems to be women who do these types of shows. People still expect men to be funny. Right-of-center comedians are few and far between. Not because the audience isn't there for them, but because late-night talk show hosts and Saturday Night Live won't have them on. 
and they would just get kicked off social media platforms. Without a platform or a signal boost, you're never going to hear of them. So you're left with comics that aren't funny and comedy that is actually propaganda. Anyway, check out Norm MacDonald on YouTube and be sure to like and subscribe. His channel is, well, if you just hit uh, Norm MacDonald on YouTube, it'll come up. But um, it's I'm Not Norm. 160,000 subscribers, and he's he has a different take on comedy. So he's uh, older and fatter now, but he's still very, very funny. Check him out. Thanks for listening.